The other day, I was looking over some YouTube comments on my Noctua air cooler install video, and I came across one that I found quite interesting. Does it matter what side the fan is on? I have an Asus ROG Strix X570F motherboard and installed the cooler when I first had two sticks of RAM. However, I bought two more and I can't install the final one because the cooler is too big due to the fan overlapping on the RAM stick slots. And it's true. If you aren't using low profile RAM with the Noctua NH-U14S, the supplied 140mm fan will cause some clearance issues. Now, I don't have a problem with this as I'm only using two DIMMs in my build, but it certainly could pose a problem for those interested in expanding their memory. So it begs the question, what is the most optimal fan placement on your heatsink? Is it best with the heatsink in the front, the back, or on both sides? Now, to answer this question, I will be testing fan placement in three ways. Firstly, I'll be testing the cooler in its stock configuration, with one fan in the front. After that, I'll swap the fan to the back of the cooler and see how much potential performance loss there is. Finally, I'm going to add a second 140mm fan to the cooler to determine whether or not there is any noticeable performance improvements when having two 140mm fans on the CPU heatsink. Now, I fully expect there to be a performance loss when we move the fan from the front of the heatsink to the back, simply because the fan is now pulling through the heatsink itself. However, I want to see whether or not the difference is noticeable enough or justified if somebody would be considering adding four sticks of RAM to their build and still wanting to use this particular cooler. For testing, I'm going to be using the BMW Blender test as well as the Classroom Render test to see how much performance and temperatures are affected. Now keep in mind there may be some variances with this test from case to case, from CPU to CPU, and just general work environments. So for this particular test, here is the list of specifications that my computer currently has. Now one thing to note just before we get into the testing is that I did have to remove my GPU in order to get access to the clips on the heatsink fans. So just keep that in mind that you may need to remove it depending on the amount of clearance you have between the top of your GPU and the bottom of your heatsink. All right, so I'm currently running the BMW benchmark at the moment. We're looking temps at around 68 degrees right now on the CPU itself. And this is what the system sounds like at the moment. And based on the task manager, that is full gas. All right, at the moment, we are benchmarking the CPU with the fan at the back of the heatsink. So you can see there, it's cooking. Now, interestingly, the temperatures are around close to the same as the previous test. I don't have the, the data next to me for um, the fan at the front, but here we're seeing about 69 degrees. We're about three quarters of the way through the BMW benchmark at the moment but you can hear the fans going quite a bit more at the moment with this configuration. Interesting, we'll see what happens. All right, and we are currently in the midst of doing the last test. This is of course for the dual configuration, one fan at the front and one fan at the back. As you can see, we're about getting on two thirds of the way done the BMW benchmark. We are at 99% usage. And if you look at the CPU temperatures at the moment, we're hovering, hovering at around 67 degrees for the max. So we'll see where that goes, but um, be interesting to see how much of a difference two fans makes on the cooler. All right, and here are the results. And frankly, they're quite surprising. Just for reference, I tested each one of these configurations three times in each configuration, and this is the numbers that I came up with. 
The max temperature in the front configuration was 69.9 degrees Celsius. At the back, it was 70.5, and with both fans going, it was 68.3. So really, in terms of temperature, there isn't much of a difference between the three configurations. This is especially interesting because I think that just goes to show how well built the heat sinks are from these Noctua coolers. Another thing to note as well is the rear fan and dual fan configurations were considerably louder than just a one single fan in the front. And I think that's just because with the rear fan, you have it pulling air through to the other side. And with both fans, you have two moving parts rather than one. The time performance for the blender render is also very interesting. As you can see, the front configuration was the fastest to render the two scenes that I had. What's more interesting is that two fans doesn't actually add any performance and in fact, in my test, decreased the overall performance of the render time. This was absolutely not something that I expected initially. So if there's any engineers or PC enthusiasts in the comments, please let me know if you've had similar experiences with this because I'd be curious to see if this is just a weird one-off or if this is a, a known thing in the community. So to answer the question that sparked this video, yes you can have the fan on the other side and run with four dim slots without any major losses to any sort of performance or temperature. Yes it's going to be a little bit louder but let's be honest here the Noctua fans are very quiet and this is all relative anyway. I think that overall, this was a really interesting test for me to do. If you have any questions about my methodology or any comments about it, please let me know. I'd love to learn more about your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you thought this video was interesting. I want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.